Coming up, I'm going to be talking about Young Women in the Sea coming to Disney Plus. Plus, also, the D23 lineup has been announced. I'll be doing a bit of a dive into that. But before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hi, it's Roger here from what's on at DisneyPlus.com. It's time for a quick Disney Plus news roundup. Let's start off with talking about a brand new film heading to Disney Plus pretty soon, A Young Woman and the Sea, which came out in cinemas for a limited time back in May. It's going to be hitting Disney Plus around the world um, next week on July the 19th, just in time for the Olympics. Now this film stars Daisy Ridley and she it's all about kind of the first woman that swam across the English Channel going from England to France and this also she went on to win um, at the Olympics. So this film was originally going to be heading to Disney Plus. They decided that they were actually going to put it out in cinemas for a little bit because it, when they did their screen testings it tested really high. There was a lot of um, love for it. And so they therefore decided to put it out in cinemas. Now Disney did state that this they weren't expecting it to make a lot of money. They weren't even going to report on how much money it made at the box office. So I don't really know. It's not a huge amount. But then this film probably wasn't a huge amount um, to make. But also now it means it can probably go for awards and stuff. Jerry Brockheimer had said that it was you know this highest tested film he'd ever made. And he really wanted it out in cinemas. And so he kind of pushed for that. Um, so this film, I'm looking forward to watching it. I'll be, um, luckily I can watch it a little bit earlier and so I'll be sharing my review on it pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I think this is great and it kind of ties up with what I was expecting. Um, it's been what, just over six, eight weeks maybe by the time it hits Disney Plus. But this was a very kind of rare thing. Disney doesn't do these limited releases very often. This might be a bit of an experiment, see how it did. But also I think with the Olympics, they kind of wanted to tie it in with this one. And it kind of makes sense work because July was a little bit of a light month for new releases. But this one definitely kind of boosts up that subscription value. Um, so you're going to be checking it out. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Shifting gears now and actually going across the channel. Um, if you are planning on going to Disneyland Paris this summer, um, good news. If you're a Disney Plus subscriber, you are now able to get um, a 20% discount um, if you want. You have to book it by, I think it's the end of September. And it's a book package where you book the hotel and also your tickets together. There are some rooms and hotels which um, you can't use. But if you're planning a last minute thing, well, definitely worth checking out the official Disneyland website. So you use your new Disney ID. This is the thing now with the mobile guy interconnecting everything under one big user ID. Makes it a lot easier. But this is open to pretty much most people um, with Disney Plus subscriptions. It doesn't look like it works maybe with um, like the Middle East and stuff. But um, for, yeah, so if you're in France, UK, etc., you can use this one. So yes, yeah, so if you haven't booked your trip and you're going to be doing it anyway, well worth having a look, seeing it. And if you aren't a Disney Plus subscriber and you're going to and you're going to be booking a trip this summer, it's all kind of last minute anyway. It might be worth signing up for like the ad supported tier just to kind of get the discount because that could really make a big difference. But nice to see them doing stuff for Disneyland Paris. They always do stuff in the US. Nice to see this kind of coming in. I'd hope for this would be something that they could do all the time. And if they look like on Disney cruises and other things like that, I think that would be a great step forward to kind of just keep you locked into the system. But yeah, um, Disneyland Paris, an amazing park, especially in the summer. I do like, I prefer going in the summer, obviously nicer weather than going in the middle of the winter when it's cold and wet and snowy and icy. But yeah, Disneyland Paris is 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 fantastic. One of the most beautiful parks there. And they've got some amazing attractions. But let us know you're going to be heading there, um, or if you've been there in the past, let me know um, what you think of the park. Okay, let's now shift over to D23, the ultimate fan event, which is formerly known as the D23 Expo. It's taking place next month in Anaheim, California. Um, from the 9th to the 11th of August. So it's going to be taking place at the Anaheim Convention Center. They're also going to be doing a special presentation each night at the Honda Center, a couple of miles away. And so that's going to be a big change. So with that, they have announced the schedule of everything that's come out. Um, in the evenings, on the Friday night, it's going to be the Studio Showcase. So that's the one that we are, as Disney Plus fans, going to be most interested in. This is where they will... Um, reveal trailers and also maybe announce new films or shows. Um, it's, a, it's currently scheduled for a two hour presentation. It probably could go a little bit longer. Um, we don't yet know if it's going to be live streamed at all. I hope it is. But generally with this kind of thing, obviously those in attendance will get previews and stuff. But I also suspect we will be getting trailers and stuff so on. Um, so that's the big one. Now I do want to kind of put this into context. So at the last D22 Expo, which I was, I was lucky enough to go to, I've been wanting to go there for like a decade. I decided to go at that time, loved it. 
and it was great. So they had three different presentations, one for Marvel, Star Wars, and 20th Century Studios. That was close to about three hours long. They had another one which was for Disney Animation and Pixar, and then they had another one for Disney branded television. Altogether, I think that was probably close to about seven, seven and a half, eight hours worth of live presentations of new shows, new announcements. This new one that they're doing this year at the Honda Center is currently scheduled for two hours. So I do want to set expectations at that point of going, do not expect a lot of stuff to be announced that we don't know about because A, they've not been filming stuff, everything's a little bit different with how much stuff's coming out. They are pulling back on what they're making, how many Disney Plus originals. And I think there's a lot of stuff that's been delayed that will, they will cover. I think some of the Marvel stuff has probably shifted over to San Diego Comic Con later this month to give them a little bit more space. But I do just want to put that there. And I usually say this um, kind of every time there's a big event of just like set your expectations to low rather than being in there. Expect If you're expecting 15 new Marvel announcements and 10 new Star Wars shows and lots of other Disney Plus originals, I think you will be very disappointed because... A lot of the stuff got delayed, and therefore that's what they're going to be talking about. Um, there might be some of the things that they're filming right now that you know we might get to see a little bit of, but just put that into correlation that in 2022 there was over seven hours of on-screen like presentations for their movies and TV. This year it's two hours, so that cuts it back. Uh, they have also announced the lineup for the main presentation, so there's going to be three different stages. The premiere, there's also the archive stage and the backlot one. Now in terms of what this has done is by moving the major presentations over to the Honda Center, it's allowed for a little bit more stuff to go into the main um, sort of hall. And I'm going to be honest. I'm a little bit disappointed with it. Now, I had planned on going to D23 this year. I ultimately decided that it just wasn't going to be um, just worth it financially. And I am actually looking at this finger, and I think I made the right call because, as I said, that presentation is much smaller. But in terms of Disney Plus side of things, there's not as much presentation. There are presentations um, in the main stage for Disney Animation. So there's going to be one presentation for like Spider-Man, X-Men, you know, Eyes of Wakanda, um, What If, etc. So there is going to be a animated Marvel special. So that, that's definitely one that's very high up. There's the Percy Jackson presentation. But I, the trouble is with that is they haven't actually even started filming season two yet. So that's, there's, there's a, I don't know what they're going to do with that. But obviously they can bring them on and they can do bits and pieces for it. Um, there's also lots of other little presentations going on in the smaller rooms. Um, for example, there's one on Grey's Anatomy, one on Abbott Elementary. There's also a big presentation in the main hall for like animation, like Futurama, Simpsons, King of the Hill. So maybe we get a little bit more information on that King of the Hill um, reboot that they're apparently working on. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, there, there's there's a lot less stuff here. So I'm, I'm, I went through the list and I've put up an article kind of going through some of the key ones. And there might be the odd little trailer and stuff come out, but I think it's gonna be a lot less news in general because we're really seeing that with Disney right now anyway. Um, there is a lot less news. There is gonna be a pavilion for Disney Plus. You can meet Bluey there. There's also gonna be um, like an area that you can go and get photo opportunities. There's one for Hulu, there's one for Marvel, there's one for Star Wars, etc. So all these different brands and like interactions and exhibits and stuff to go into. Lots of stuff to do. And that's kind of the big difference of with the main presentations being moved to the Honda Center in the evenings, people got more time to, to get around and stuff. Reservations are opening up um, if you've got your tickets. Uh, at the minute it is all sold out. The difference as well with the showcase, they've now just done like ticketed system. So you get your seat. So there's no more need to like queue up and get a good seat. And like, you know what seat you've got before you get there, which again, removes a lot of the queuing up method to try and get close to it. Um, so that's it. Um, again, live stream, I don't know. I mean, I suspect the Legends show and also the theme park show Horizons on the Saturday and the Sunday night, they tend to live stream. They've done them in the past. I would expect that to be the case. I also wouldn't be at all surprised if that studio showcase is live streamed because um, they have talked about it. There was also previous talk of them maybe putting it out on Disney+. Plus. No official confirmation. Some of the side stages and stuff, you know, they do tend to live stream a lot of this stuff so we can watch from home. Um, but yeah, um, overall, 
my expectations for this, um, as someone you know that's not going there now, and for those of us that aren't obviously there, we can set, I think, our expectations that there will be news coming out of it, and there will probably be little trailers and bits and pieces, and that's where they might announce stuff. But just do not expect what we've seen in previous ones like 2019, 2022, where there was just loads of Disney Plus stuff. I mean, they pretty much had their own presentations. This year, very much less. I mean, you, do, you can just look at the lineup right now of like what's coming out over the next two years, most of which has already been filmed. Um, you know, I think we might, you know, like Wonder Man might be something that they might do at San Diego Comic Con or uh, D23. But a lot of these shows and stuff, we know they're coming and they're a few years away. So I think it's going to be great for those in attendance. I am very, very jealous and I'm, I wish I was there for that presentation. But um, yeah, it's, I just expect a lot less. So I, I did want to just kind of address some of that stuff. But yeah, so that's my thoughts. On D23, I'm going to be covering it as much as I can. I'm going to be staying up late on the night um, for that presentation. That's the other big problem that I had personally. And this was just a pure personal problem of like, with them going into that Honda Center, um, it was later in the evening, like 7, 9, 10 o'clock at night. And while that's great to have your ticket sorted and stuff, but for me with jet lag, that was going to be a nightmare. <laughs> and no one's trying to get there and back. And it was like, that's going to be hard. Um, but yeah, it, there's a lot of stuff there. There's the full list. Obviously, if you go into the event, you're gonna you can put in your res reservations. Though I do think as well, if you go into the Honda Center in the evening, it does mean that you're not gonna be able to get in on those later showings. Um, like for example, the the animation one on the Monday. I think it's the Monday night with like Futurama and the Simpsons and stuff. You're probably not gonna have time to make it across to the Honda Center. So if you haven't got a Honda Center ticket and you just go into the main one, I would suggest when you do your reservations, you probably put in the later shows. You've probably got a much better chance of getting in on them. Also at the event, just remember there's gonna be a win or lose watch party one evening. Um, so. I'm guessing that show must be coming up pretty soon if they're going to be doing a preview. Maybe that's where they're going to show off the first episode and stuff. We might get a little bit more of a hint, but there's going to be signings and stuff as well. I suspect looking at the list of films that I've said, so they're kind of going in there and doing some like uh, signings with filmmakers. Moana 2, Zootopia 2, Toy Story, um, Elio were all mentioned as some of the filmmakers there. So I'm guessing if they're there to do the, the signings, they're probably going to be in the main presentation as well. So I suspect we might get little bits of updates on those movies. But there we go. So that is kind of my little bit of a rundown. As, as I said, you'll find the full list for the full... I'm not going to go through every single thing because we'll be here all day. But um, that's that. Um, in terms of new content today on Disney+, Plus, the brand new film Descendants The Rise of Red is out. They've also got some sing-along versions of Descendants films. Also, in some countries, we've got a new Lainey Wilson documentary, which was put out on Disney Plus a while ago. We've also got some Japanese anime. Lots of stuff to watch over the weekend. I'm going to be checking out um, Descendants. I do need to watch that one. It looks like it should be a lot of fun. But let's now jump into our question of the day. Joel asks, speaking of Inside Out 2, do you think it will overtake Lion King at 2019 as the highest grossing animated film ever? Yeah, so I'm not sure of this because The Lion King, I think, was like 1.6 billion. So Inside Out is like three, four hundred million away from that. I'm not sure if it's, if it's, has it going to have enough legs to do that? The only thing is, we've still got the rest of the summer. We still, it's, it's, it is going to drop off, um, but they still want a chance to keep going. I think it's going to start dripping off, obviously, as well. It's now got competition from the Minions and Despicable Me, plus there's other new movies coming out. And you've got Twisters and Deadpool. But in some way, Despicable Me and Inside Out 2 are pretty much what we've got now. The summer are just locked on those are the two big kids' films. I think it's going to struggle getting to that neck, to that bigger limit. But Inside Out 2 is now the biggest grossing Pixar film of all time. Not bad, really. I mean, considering we were, everyone was worried about how well it was going to do and it wasn't going to be, you know, they've 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 knocked it out the park with this one, and that's definitely nothing is going to get rid of um, the stench of failure like a lot of win. And this one's this one's going to be good, and then I think Deadpool is going to be even better. Uh, actually, I, I, I don't know if it will be hit one point two, but I think Deadpool is going to be huge. I can't wait to see that one too. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out yesterday's video where I spoke about a load of FX shows and the first look at a new series called Interior Chinatown. Looking forward to seeing all that. I'll be back on Sunday 
with a live Q and A. So if you're a Patreon or YouTube channel member, take a look out to see. I'm gonna put up the post for the questions, and anyone can join and do so. And on that note, guys, thank you very much. See you guys soon. Later's.